Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Tech Accelerator event. My name is Tracy, a product manager on the Entro ID protection team. In this session, we will talk about how you can use Microsoft Entro ID protection to safeguard your organization. In the recent Entro event, we have shared that we recognize the increasing challenges for organizations to protect their identities. We see that attacks today are more sophisticated. That means that SOC teams are overwhelmed with all the tools and reports. And if attacks do get through, the loss can be unbearably high for organizations. And that's why we have invested so much in developing and improving intra ID protection, formerly known as identity protection. So, what is Microsoft Entra ID Protection? Microsoft Entra ID Protection blocks identity takeover by preventing identity compromise, protecting against credential theft, and deepening insights powered by advanced machine learning. We have advanced detections to catch attacks and any suspicious activities, even the more sophisticated ones, such as token replay or attacks from nation state IPs. All risks are reported as soon as they are detected and you can view and investigate them in comprehensive risk reports. The risks are also fed into conditional access for access control. You can enable risk-based access policies to challenge and block malicious actors in real time. We understand that customers need more insights into the attacks and how well they're protected. So we have also just announced this brand new dashboard at the recent Entra event. It provides insights with actionable recommendations to enhance your protection. Now let's see a few demos. We will first demo the new dashboard, and then we will show you how to use the risk reports. We will also show you how to configure the risk policies and apply them. Now let's see how the dashboard works. There are five components on this dashboard, key metrics at the top, an attack graphic that shows attacks targeting your tenant, a map that surfaces risky locations, recommendations on what to do to address the attacks, and recent risk-related activities in your tenant. Now, let's take a closer look at each of them. We learn from customers that they want to know how well they're protected over time, and what's the impact of the protections they have deployed. So now we're providing these four key metrics to give insights right into that. Each metric card has a definition and accumulated value for the past 12 months, a change in percentage in the past 30 days, and the line graph that shows the monthly trend of the metric. You can interact with the graph hovering over on the point of the line to view the specific value of the metric for that month. The first metric is number of attacks blocked. As you have more security measures in place, such as risk-based policies or security defaults, the protection of your tenant is strengthened over time. The number of attacks blocked in the past 12 months can show the effectiveness of these security measures in defending your tenant. You can observe the growing number of users protected, benefiting from these security measures as well. Additionally, the reduction in mean time to remediate can also showcase the effectiveness of these protective measures. A risky user is not safe unless they are successfully remediated. Therefore, the shorter it takes from identifying a risk to resolving it, the better. This key metric can highlight whether your organization is able to respond to or recover from possible identity compromises in a timely manner. After understanding your security posture, the next thing you're interested in would be, what kind of attacks are targeting my organization right now? To answer that question, we now present this innovative visualization that highlights the common identity-based attack patterns detected for your tenant over the past 30 days. These attack patterns are identified based on our advanced detections, such as leaked credentials, anomalous token, password spray, and more. On the left, you can see the volume of each attack type in the past 30 days. And on the right side of the shield, you have the crucial information on how many attacks were successfully blocked and how many remain that still require remediation. You can filter the graphic to view selected attack types only, and the graphic will update accordingly. You can also choose to see only the volume of attacks that are not remediated yet. 
insights visualized here really help you understand your current security posture, effectiveness of your protective measures, and plan for next steps to enhance your security posture. To assist you in taking effective actions, we're offering recommendations right here based on your risk exposure. For example, we find that at least 20 high-risk users in your tenant have gained access using valid accounts. That suggests that over 20 of your users might have been compromised. In this case, enabling a user risk-based policy to require password reset for high-risk users would be the most efficient and effective approach to bring these users back to a safe state. So we provide this recommendation with an action link. If you have a P2 license, clicking on the link will directly take you to configure the policy, and you will be able to click on View All to view a comprehensive list of recommendations and take actions accordingly. Map is also a highly requested component from customers. It highlights the locations where the risky sign has happened in the past one month, and you can select a different time range or another risk level to view more information. The size of the bubbles reflect the volume of risky signings in that location. You can zoom in for a closer view, and hovering over the bubble will show you the name of the country as well. Finally, there is recent activity. These are summaries of risk-related activities that happened in your tenant recently. You will be able to see, for example, what remediations have been done by admins or by users you also have the option to view all of the activities. Now we have finished the deep dive on the new dashboard. It presents rich insights through compelling visuals to help you understand your security posture and the impact of protections you have deployed. Admins and SOC teams will be able to use it on a daily basis, as well as share it with their business leaders to demonstrate business impact. Now let's see how you can use the risk reports to investigate and remediate risky users and how you can set up risk-based conditional access policies to block bad actors and protect your user. Here are the four comprehensive risk reports provided by Antra ID Protection. Risky users, risky workload identities, risky sign-ins, and risk detections. Let's go back to the risky users report. Usually as an admin or SOC, you would start with the risky users or risky workload identities report because you would want to know which identities are currently at risk and you will need to investigate and remediate them. Here, you can see a list of risky users with different risk state and risk level. The higher the risk level, the higher the probability that the account is compromised. So you would always want to start with high risk users. You can filter by risk state or risk level. Clicking on the risky user, you will be able to see their details in a side pane. You can see that this user is currently at high risk, which means there is a high probability that their account is compromised. Their risk was last updated at this time. There's also information about this user, such as their roles, username, and user ID. To know why this user is at risk, you will look at their risk history. Risk history will have all the events that impacted this user's risk. You can see that this user had multiple high-risk detections, including leaked credentials and Azure AD threat intelligence. At this point, you might want to block this user while you further investigate, because based on their risk history, it's extremely likely that their account is compromised. In recent risky sign-ins tab, you can also see where this user was signing in from and to which application. Looks like all the sign-ins were successful which is also something concerning. On the top, there are links to various reports, such as the user sign-ins and their risk detections. You can click into those reports to dive deeper. You also have the option to investigate with Microsoft 365 Defender to explore additional layers of information and even conduct a thorough investigation into associated security incidents. Once you conclude that the user is indeed compromised, you can click Confirm User Compromised. The user will then be elevated to high risk if they were not before. If you have user risk policy enabled, the user will be asked to securely reset their password before they can sign in again. You can also request reset password on the user manually. You will need to unblock the user for them to complete the secure password reset. 
you can switch between users to view their risk history. This user had suspicious graph activities, and then this user was signing from a new country. Those are all the reasons that made the users at risk. You can also perform bulk actions to dismiss the user's risks or confirm them as compromised. Admins and SOC teams can be overwhelmed by a high number of risky users, and that's why we highly recommend that you enable risk-based policies for auto risk remediation and protection. Let's configure risk policies, then trigger a risk user to see how the policies can block bad actors and remediate the user's risk. Let's go to conditional access and choose create new policy. I'll first create a sign in risk policy, type in the name, then choose which users you want to apply this policy to. For demo purposes, I'll apply the policy only to my test user. Then select all cloud apps. For signing risk policy, we recommend requiring MFA for medium and high signing risks. So I'll select medium and high here. Then for grant control, choose require multi-factor authentication. I will turn the policy on now. When deploying policy in your organization's tenant, you can choose to run the policy in report only mode, first to assess the impact and then turn it on. The policy was successfully created. Next, I'll create a user risk policy. Same as the sign-in risk policy, I'll include only my test user. Type in a name and then choose which users to include. Select all cloud apps. For user risk policy, we recommend requiring password change for high-risk users to protect your organization while reduce the disruption to end users. But you can configure the policy as you see fit for your organization. Then for grant control, choose require password change. You will notice that this will automatically select require authentication strength, MFA, which means the user will have to complete multi-factor authentication first in order to change their password security to ensure account safety. Now I have two risk-based policies created. Let's see how they can block malicious actors and keep the user safe. I have just triggered a risky user and let's take a look. As an admin looking at risky users report, I can see that this user KTAST has become a risky user with a risk level high. That's because on my other device, I was trying to sign into this KTAST account from a Tor browser to simulate an access from a malicious actor. Because I have sign-in risk policy enabled just now, the sign-in was challenged with MFA. As a malicious actor, I couldn't complete MFA, so the sign-in failed which means the malicious actor was successfully blocked. You can see that from recent risky sign-in, that the sign-ins were failed. But that doesn't mean the user is completely safe right now because the malicious actor still has their credentials. And looking at risk history, there were two risks detected, Azure AD threat intelligence and anonymous IP address, which was reported because the sign-in was from a Tor browser. As an admin, I will confirm this user as compromised. The user was already at high risk, and this will request a secure password change when the user is trying to sign in because I have a user risk policy in place. Now, when the actual user KTest tries to sign in, she will be asked to perform a secure password reset. Let's see how it works. It says your account is at risk, and the user needs to complete MFA first to verify their identity and then reset their password. The user will type in their password and confirming their new password. Now the user's password was reset successfully and that the user is safe again. That's it for the demo. To better understand how Entry-ID protection uses machine learning to detect risks as we just saw, and how does a user become a risky user, let's look at this diagram. When the user is trying to sign in, Entry-ID protection's real-time machine learning models will run. Based on the user's previous behaviors and properties of the sign-in, the model looks for anything suspicious and report them as risk detections. The model will also calculate a risk level for the sign-in and a risk level for the user. The user's risk level will indicate how likely that this user's identity is compromised. The sign-in risk level and user risk levels will also be sent to conditional access. So at this point, if you have user risk policies or signing risk policies enabled, the risky user will be challenged. 
If they fail the challenge, such as MFA, they will be blocked, and your organization's resources are protected from a malicious actor. That's why it's so critical to have risk-based policies enabled, because if you don't, attackers will get in without being challenged at all. But our product doesn't stop there. We also have offline model to continue analyzing the sign-in and the user's account and report risks if there are any. Those risks all contribute to the user's risk score and will elevate the user's risk level. Finally, as a recap and reminder on what this Microsoft Entra ID protection offers, Entra ID protection analyzes trillions of signals to check for anomalies and risky behaviors. It flags any suspicious activities and reports any risky identities that might have been compromised. Where are these signals coming from? There are three main sources. First is what we call auto-generated signals, and those are our high-quality machine learning or heuristic-based detections. We also get detections from other first parties. Second source is our expert-generated signals. We have dedicated teams of security researchers and human laborers to investigate and identify attack patterns and compromises. Having access to these expert-generated signals is a huge benefit for using Microsoft products. And the third source is end-user generated signals. Our algorithms learn and adapt based on real feedback to improve in precision. With these signals, our risk evaluation engine, which is also based on machine learning models, will be able to calculate risk levels for the identities. And then risky users, risky signings, and risky workload identities will be reported. With these risky insights, you will be able to do a lot from securing user access to investigation you can implement dynamic risk-based conditional access policies like what we saw in the demo just now to block bad actors while also allow good users to remediate, providing a balance between security and user convenience. You can investigate and remediate risks with comprehensive risk reports, just like what we saw in the demo just now, enabling you to understand where your vulnerabilities lie. Entra ID protection is also seamlessly integrated with other Microsoft security products like Sentinel and Microsoft 365 Defender. You also have the option to export risks to third-party themes tools. Here comes to the end of our session. To learn more, please check out these links and go to the Entra portal to try out our product. Thank you for joining this session. Hope you enjoy the rest of the Tech Accelerator event.